Richard Southern joins us to chat about some of the day's more interesting stories. And today we're starting with uh, Justin Bieber's apparently controversial <laughs> new look, Richard. He's always up to something, that Bieber, mm -hmm. you know? Uh, well, he was walking around naked the other year, <laughs> uh, you know, urinating in a bucket the other year. He's always up to something. Here's the latest Bieber. He, he's got a new look, and people aren't happy. Check out the hair, Erica. It's... Um, Short dreadlocks is what he's sporting right now. And then some people online, they said, listen, this is this is cultural appropriation. This is racial insensitivity because, you know, dreadlocks are traditionally connected to the culture and the identities of, of black people. And wearing them is, is viewed by some as cultural appropriation. So uh, there were those online that took a big issue with this. Others, though, defended Bieber saying, listen, he can wear his hair however he wants. And only with Bieber could something of this like this happen before? Like a few years ago, we had kind of the same issue when he had cornrows on and he faced yeah. a lot of criticism. Yeah. What's your take on this, Erica? You know, you know what? I can't say I feel any kind of way about Justin Bieber's hair. <laughs> so I don't know if I have a strong <laughs> enough opinion about how he's wearing his hairstyle. I don't know. Do you think it's okay? I, I don't I don't know about the cultural appropriation part, but mm. I don't think it really suits him. I think he, he doesn't look very good. And um, I think, you know, Bieber needs to maybe stop posting so many pictures of himself. Yeah. and just get back to making making music. I don't I mind do. Bieber. He comes out with some bangers. He you know? does. I do love the music, I got to say. All right. Uh, one Danish pub is serving up beer, but only to customers who pass the COVID-19 test. You have to wonder if we'll soon be seeing something like that here in Canada, Richard. Mm, yeah, because you don't want to be sitting next to someone at the pub, Erica, that has the sniffles mm -hmm. and maybe the COVID. So, yeah, in Copenhagen, this is the bar in Copenhagen. You want to go in. You got to go to a little booth first. You take a test. You give 25 bucks over. You take the test. They actually give you a beer while you're waiting. If everything checks out, you come back negative, then you can go in the actual bar itself and go crazy and all that. Also, if, you, if you've been vaccinated, you can show your proof of vaccination and simply walk right in like those guys are doing right there. That seems pretty reasonable. Right. I don't know. I mean, it means having to wait 25 minutes to get in. But if you have a beer to sip on, not so bad, right? Yeah, and the reward is that you get to hang out and uh, have a beer in a pub. <laughs> so there you go. <laughs> Sign okay. me up. I'll do anything. I'll take any <laughs> test you want, Erica. All right. If a nice cold beer doesn't help relieve your stress, perhaps spending some time in the garden might work. Are you going to start a garden this year? I don't think I have a green thumb. I'm not too good with the plants. I did it for the first time last year. I enjoyed it, but it was a lot of work and a lot of worry because I was always worried about my tomatoes blowing over or mm -hmm. something like that. Anyways, I think I'm an exception to the rule because there's a new study out and it found gardening even just twice a week improves well-being and relieves stress. And the more you flex your green thumb, the better off you are. It found that those who garden every day had well-being scores of 6.6% higher than the average uh, person and 4. Um, 4.2% uh, uh, less uh, stress levels than the average person. So gardening really helped with that. And all, people also felt physically better. So it helps your body and your mind. So I think I'm just going to get some herbs going this year, some basil nice. maybe, because I don't have to worry about that too much. You know, the tomatoes are a lot of big commitment for me, Erica. <laughs> they are. My uncle actually, he um, he grows tomatoes every year in his garden. We have fresh tomatoes and it tastes so good. Like, I think I should learn from him, I think. People don't realize the, the difference between some people between a fresh tomato oh. and a store-bought one, but it's a huge difference. It is huge. Bite into a fresh tomato, <laughs> it's like the greatest thing ever. All right, Richard. I uh, can't wait for August. Now I can't wait for August. Thanks, Erica. <laughs> okay, uh, we'll see you tomorrow. Have a great night, Richard. Thanks.